No? James, this uh, sorry, this spring practice, you know, we talked last weekend, you were just sort of getting them to the point where they're ready to get into pads. Now that you've seen them in pads a couple of times, what have you, what have you thought so far? I, I've been pleased. I, I thought today uh, our energy was really good, our leadership, our focus and attention to detail, our competitiveness. We have uh, been a little bit more structured in the, in the way we're installing. So my point is, with, with, uh, with the offense, instead of them getting um, a lot of blitz and crazy looks early on in spring, we're going back more part, part, hole and building. It's hard because our defense likes to do a lot of that. So I'm asking them to limit and let it progress and let it grow. Um, and I think that's going to be helpful. We're going to use the same model during camp. I thought last year um, our defense built up a lot of confidence and our offense with a young offense was seeing too many looks early on. And I think that's in the long run is going to be better for everybody. So I've been pleased with that. Plus it gives you a better opportunity to evaluate the guys and how they're playing rather than seeing 55 different looks on day one, if that makes sense. Where are you O-line wise? And is that something you'd like to get kind of hammered down in the spring? Or do you think you see that carrying over kind of starting five rotation into camp? No, I, I, I'd rather wait to the last minute to get the O-line situation <laughs> resolved. No, uh, obviously, yeah, we'd like to get it resolved now. Um, we're kind of force feeding uh, Paris and Chance Sorrell right now um, on the position. Um, Albert's still doing some nice things, but we feel like we need to force feed those two guys and get them as many reps as possible. Um, the other positions, I think, for the most part, guys are, are taking control of some spots. Um, but yeah, the, the quicker we can identify that, the better. No different today, we voted on our leadership council. Uh, by the end of camp, we'll vote on captains like we did last year to be able to go into the summer with some leadership. Uh, but I think the O-line is a great example of that as well. We'd like as many positions solidified ahead of time as we can. Does the same kind of carry over for the defensive line, kind of guys who are going in for either Dion or CJ, and, and how, how that's going? Yeah, it's a little bit different because the chemistry of the O-line working together is so important. With defense, those guys are going to rotate in and play anyway. Um, so yeah, it's important to, to figure out who those replacements are going to be as quick as possible. But whether you're the first defensive end or the second defensive end or the third defensive end or even the fourth defensive end, you're still going to play a lot of football. With the O-line, you're trying to keep those five guys playing together as much as you possibly can. And last year, we were in a situation where it was a different five almost every game. So um, it's a little bit different dynamic, if that makes sense. You see Nelson, Gaia, and Dowry kind of helping some of these younger guys along. And, and if so, how does that maybe help their development? They're young guys too, but kind of older guys basically. Yeah, no, I, no, I agree. I think the experience is the important thing. Um, what they have to do is they have to have the confidence to do it. So my point is, if they're lining up next to a young guy, they can't sit there. They got to they got to ID the front. They got to make the calls to allow that younger, less experienced guy to play with more confidence because the veteran next to him is taking control. Does that make sense? Um, that's where last year we had some challenges because we only had one returning starter in Donovan and a whole new offense. So no one was confident with taking responsibility. It's no different than uh, you know we talk about guys going out and making the call. A lot of times they're afraid to make the call because if it's the wrong call. Well, the most important thing is to get everybody on the same page and make a decision. And for so far, we've done a pretty good job of that. We haven't really talked that much about the running. Your back beard today. game is really strong right now. <laughs> no, you know, uh, I miss the goatee. No, it's, it's a, a good look. Work. No, it's a good look. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Yeah, I still think the goatee, though. Nothing against well, that. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> but uh, regarding the running backs, you know, after Akeel Lynch, what have you seen from the guys behind him? And, you know, uh, what are some things we can expect to see during the spring game with those guys? Yeah, I think uh, I think Nick Scott is really showing some flashes. I think Akeel. Um, is really showing some flashes. Um, I, I think all those guys, I think even Mark Allen's done some nice things. You know, what I, what I like is we're being a lot more definitive. Um, there's less hesitation. We're getting downhill. We're keeping our shoulders square. And we're just so much stronger and more explosive than we were last year. Um, so I, I, I've been pleased. You know, I, I've been pleased uh, with that group. We still got a long ways to go, but Akeel's looking like the workhorse that we think he can be, and some of the young guys that we were excited about um, are showing are showing some pretty good signs. You know, we ran four-minute drill today. Today we took, I think you guys were here for it, we took the Illinois situation exactly, yard line, situation, timeouts, and went through it again. And that's what we've, we've done. We've gone back and took all, this, all these different situations from the games last year, and we want to play them out. And we want to learn from some of the mistakes we did last year. And the offense was able to line up 
in four minute offense and play pretty good and be able to, to, to win both of those situations in terms of eating up the clock. So uh, that's because of your old line, tight ends are blocking better as well as the running backs running hard. Is that something you've always done, kind of repeated game situations? Or well, I think, the spring? Uh, yes, and I think it's one of those things, you're trying to make it more valuable. So if I get up there and I just say, four minute situation, three, three, uh, three minutes and 10 seconds left, two timeouts, and I'm just coming up with something. But if I can tell them this is the situation, and this is exactly where we were at last year against Illinois. Offense, you want to end the game on your terms, controlling your own fate, controlling your own destiny. Defense, we're trying to get off the field and get the ball back to our offense. So the defense is, and go through the whole thing. So I think whenever you can point back to a specific example, it carries more weight, especially when it was a situation we weren't successful in. That makes sense. We may take a situation from a Super Bowl. But it, it's something that when I call out and I can say, here's the situation from the Super Bowl, here's the situation from the AFC Championship, here's the situation from the Big Ten Championship, or something our, our, ourselves is probably even more, more relevant. Jim, you talked about the offensive line experience, giving Christian the opportunity to kind of work on his own game, not have to solve so many problems. What sorts of things do you want him to work on, and what sorts of things have you seen him sort of work on this spring? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's, you know, a couple things. I think, you know, what happens is when you get hit that much, you start falling into bad habits, you start drifting, your footwork's not as clean, falling off throws, things like that. But more than anything, it's just the management of the game. It's getting us in the right place. It's getting out of the bad place. It's getting the playmakers the ball. It's managing the clock. It's all those things. And last year, you know, um, you know, really he was so he was so focused on everybody else and trying to help them that you know it, it, it stunted his development in some ways. So uh, I'm glad he's able to get back to be focused on those things. You talked about water, please. You talked at your spring news conference about moving Jordan Lucas back to safety. What have you seen from him there, and who are some of the guys who have stepped up, you know, to compete for his corner spot? I think it's a combination. Jordan, um, you know, he's a physical corner. He's got the body. As you guys know, he loves to talk. So being back there as a safety and being able to kind of coordinate and tell people where to go and where to line up, thank you very much, yep. um, is really important. Um, the other thing, obviously, you don't make that move unless you feel good about the young corners. So having a Christian Campbell, having a Grant, Trevor's playing a really high level. Daquan Worley's showing some nice things. We need that fourth guy to step up for us right now. Uh, and then the move makes really good sense because now you got a two and a half deep at safety and hopefully a two and a half, half deep at corner. Regarding the, the transition to safety, does he have that conversation going How does he feel about it? Yeah. Yeah, you never move a kid to another position unless he feels good about it. It's no different than recruiting. You don't recruit a guy to play one position and then move him to another position and he doesn't feel good about it. You're never going to have the opportunity to maximize their experience if they're not playing the position that their heart is in. So, yeah, we wouldn't have made the move unless he felt great about it. Well, regarding the uh, game situation, the replay game situations, I'm just curious, is there a particular game situation you've had to practice a little bit more than the others? No, um, you know, because if you look at it, I think our defense needs work on two minutes. Our offense needs work on four minutes. But really, you know, we want to work on all those situations. So what we do is we map out our entire spring practice. Are we getting enough four minute situations? Are we getting enough two minute situations? Are we getting enough goal line? You take all the different situations, you know, in football, first down calls, second down calls. Sometimes it may be too many. I mean, you, you, you rep the heck out of goal line and then maybe you run it nine times, you know, during the year. So you gotta just make sure um, that the things you're doing in practice make sense for the game. So we wanna make sure we get all the situations covered and we make sure we're spending the right amount of time on it as well based on how many times are you really going to run those things during the game? And not just based off this year, based off the last five years, um, you know, studying the game. Brennan and Klein are two guys who didn't play last year. What are you seeing of them now that you got you have them back? Who's the first one? Brennan and Klein. Yeah, um, you know, they're still a little bit limited in some ways. Um, they're just, you know, they're just so much more mature guys that have been around. Their leadership is great in the locker room. Um, I, I'll be able to answer that better a little bit, uh, you know, probably in camp. Klein has been out for a long time. Brenneman's been out for a long time. So to think they're going to come in from the first day of spring ball and be full go and, and see no residual effects from it, that's not going to happen. You talked about your tight ends and your opening presser this spring about how to, to be that legitimate threat, they have to block better in the running game. How do you do that where you have, I imagine you have to expose them to contact, but it's early on, how do you strike a balance where you want to improve their blocking, but maybe you don't want to get them in those kind of contact drills? No, yeah, there's no balance. Get down, get in your stance, and block that guy. 
And if you don't, then we'll put you in again and again and again. So our lion's, our lion's den, you know, the, the, what people call Oklahoma drill, the one-on-one -on -one boar drills, put them in there and force feeding them to do it. They've got to do it. And if they don't, then we'll go, we'll go 10 personnel. And I've seen some really good signs from them. They're, they, they're, they're embracing it. They, they understand it. So that's going to happen. You know, we're not, we're not going to get into that situation where, you know, we're easing people into things anymore. They're going to embrace it or we're going to move on. And they've embraced it so far. I've been very pleased with it. James, you said questions. last year, uh, at one point, I don't remember exactly when it was, but that you had to practice a little differently because of the scholarship limitations as far as contact. I mean, is that going back to the lion's den drill? I mean, is it safe to say there's going to be more contact this spring? Yeah, I think that? there'll be more contact this spring. There'll be more contact okay. in camp, but we'll still be a little bit limited. We'll hold back a little bit because we're still not going to be at the 85. I'm actually, I want to be more aggressive during spring because if we have some issues, you still have some time. Mm -hmm. During camp, we got to be really smart because we're still limited. Right now, we want to get, you know, the mental and physical toughness from morning workouts mm -hmm. as well as from spring ball. And if you get a bump or a bruise or a scratch now, we got time. We got time to solve that problem before we start a camp. Michael was a big leader on your defense last year. Has Zettel kind of taken the next step towards maybe being that guy that everybody can kind of go to on that defense? I think so. I, th I think our older guys, our leaders, I, I think it's always different coming from a Mike linebacker. It's like, you know, you know, a quarterback of your defense or safety. Um, you can have leaders at every single position, but, you know, the D-line, a lot of times, they're only dealing with the front, where a linebacker is working with coverage in the DBs. He's working with the D-line and the front. So you have an opportunity to be a leader on the field, be vocal, um, which Mike was, was so big for us. So um, you'd like it to be a linebacker. I've been places where your D lineman is your guy on defense. So that could happen. Great, thanks, guys. So, thank you so much, guys. Thank you.